Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today is Thursday. That means it's marathon water change day. Um, I also went through and have been working on pruning this aquarium. A lot of the moss had gotten really, really out of control. So I yanked most of it out. Um, there's a little rhinogobius female. And I'm gonna clean my glass and uh, add some more plants. Um, the Bucephalandras are all doing awesome. The Crips are doing awesome. The water fern looks like it's getting too much light. But I thought I'd add some more Anubias into this hole in the rock that was created for me pulling out all that moss. I have this uh, new algae scraper from Fluvolt that I wanna try. It's kinda neat, it's both a, like a mag float and then you can turn it into just a normal scraper. Um, so it's time to get wet. Let's get started. So this tank doesn't get a whole ton of algae. So this tank doesn't get a whole ton of algae, but what it does get is just a small amount of green spot algae on the glass. So I have to go and scrape it off. There's not really a good solution for green spot algae as far as algae eaters because it's so hard, so tight to glass, and it just isn't palatable. So the vast majority of fish won't eat it, and it is the bane of many a fish keeper's existence. I can't tell you how many questions I get a day asking me how to get rid of green spot algae, and the answer is with an algae scraper. Look, here's a little rhinogobius female again. So every few weeks, I come in here and I scrape the front glass of this aquarium. Now I leave it everywhere else because it doesn't bother me. Now I don't bother scraping the back glass for the most part. And I don't clean the rocks in this aquarium because I want the algae grazers in here to have a lot to eat. But it's always nice when, you're, when your front glass is nice and clear. This tank is coming up on two years old which is pretty exciting. You know, a lot of times when you see planted aquariums, they're not always up for the long haul, but this is an aquarium I plan to have running probably for the rest of my hobby. I'm sure it'll go through some different manifestations, but that's why I'm really taking my time stocking it. Um, I think I might be being a bit excessive at being at two years and it's still not stocked, but you know, it is what it is priorities in the fish life. All in all, I've been really happy with how it's how it's done for me. I've had very few issues. So I have this really nice large clump of narrow or of uh, Anubius Nana. I'm going to pull out the Bucephalandra that was in there and I'm simply going to shove it right there and it should stay put nicely uh, and that just sort of fills up that hole that was in that part of the aquarium and I'll move this little piece of mini catheter in up here where it will probably be happier because it'll get more light I think that piece of Nana really makes a big difference already in the cohesiveness of the tank. So that's pretty much all I have to do to this aquarium. It doesn't take very long to scrape it. I wanted to show you guys the bristle nose spawn that I showed you on um, Tuesday in my Tuesday tip about feeding plecos because the eggs have hatched and they're now wigglers. So let's go take a look. Real quick before we go look at the plecos, I'm starting my water change on the 150. Now I did one a couple of days ago, but because I just stirred everything up, um, cleaning that front glass, I'm just going to start it again. And all I do is I start my siphon with this homemade siphon and refill at the same time until a specific volume has been changed. Uh, this tank gets a lot of water changes because of the fish in it. They like very dilute water. And I'm hoping that those dace these silver and gray guys are going to fire up for you guys for me to be able to show you because of this water change. So we'll check back on this tank in a little while. So if you guys remember correctly, on Tuesday these were eggs and if you look in that back corner, 
Daddy will cooperate. Move your fins, big guy. Six days later, they are wigglers. And you can see they still have really big yolk sacs, which is that big orange ball attached to their body. And as soon as that yolk sac is um, absorbed, then they'll come out and be food seeking. He'll stop guarding them. Pretty cool though. He'll stay here and guard them until they leave that cave. We have yet another spawn in the Shelly tank. You can see how super teeny these guys are. But I'm very glad that the spawning seems to be never ending. Um, we've got these guys which are only a day or two old. And then these guys which are probably a month or so old and then a whole bunch of spawns all over this section. Um, got quite a bit of fry in the fish room right now. Let's take a look at some more. We have of course the orange hatchet and meteor minnow fry which is actually growing pretty nicely. They're at a, about half an inch right now and you can see how nice and round their bellies are. They're definitely eating well. Over here there's quite a lot of these, including a ton of buried females, babies of all sizes. And these guys are doing really, really well. You can see there's a buried female by that piece of polyfilter. But when we look closely in this aquarium, there are literally tangerine tigers everywhere, which is good. Makes me happy. I'm not sure if we're gonna be, you're gonna be able to tell or not, but in the tank with the coolie loaches of heebie-jeebidum, there's a bunch of tiny babies too. Let's see if I can get some to come to the front. They're like little itty bitty coolie loaches, which lets me know that these guys are breeding despite giving me the heebie-jeebies. You can see some of them are substantially smaller and more thread-like than others, and those are the juveniles. They're probably a solid month or more old at this point. Up here we have CPD and fry. See down at the bottom right, a smaller fry. There's all sizes in here. These guys are breeding well for me. You can see the thick cover of plants I have at the top. To get the best yield, you need to pull out the um, plants or spawning mop and then move them into a container which I have been doing and then once they're a quarter of an inch or so I put them back in with the parents. Here we have the Trigonostigma somfongsi and their fry. You can see some of them are pretty tiny. Now these I leave in with the parents and they've done okay but I think to get higher yield I would also have to pull them. Just believe it or not I'm out of space for fry. Over here we have the wild endlers. Um, all the babies are mostly hiding right now. You can see there's a male on the left and then the largely colorless females. But there are, well, let's see, there's some babies coming up now. You can see there's some youngsters, got quite a lot of those as well. There's the sexy male. There's a baby down there towards the bottom third. Another one on the left. One in the middle. So lots and lots of babies. And they tend to hide very, very close up to the surface until they're big enough not to be eaten like these guys are. Then of course we have the baby apple snails. They're about the diameter of a BB right now. About half the diameter of an English pea. Growing well. And let's see if we can find some super red fry in here as well. Here we can see one of the tiny little super fry, super red bristle nose fry using the fry cave. There's actually another one on the there's actually another one on the back, but I don't think you can just see his nose peeking over. See, these guys have nice full bellies, developing well. 
The blue eye colony continues to expand. Provence's tank is doing well. Again, this is sort of my retirement tank, so it has a lot of older fish uh, that I've had for a decade or so, um, but it also has Provence's. See that nice purple belly of the Crebensis. Some giant Siamese algae eaters, some barbs, some random tetras. In here, those are my new L306 Pinocolis. I think they're really gorgeous. I got six of them. Um, and then L236, which are a zebra type pleco. Some of the baby rams. The adult rams. Let's see if we can get uh, Captain Cranky Pants to come out a little bit. Captain Cranky Pants always has a good appetite. You can see Whiskey doesn't want to be left out either. Feeding the big boys, I dropped some krill in there. They get super, super active when it's feeding time. For the most part, the polys don't move around a whole lot, but when there's food in here, they go crazy. See the little Cuban bar up there at the surface, the bigger tropical at the bottom, and then the, the three big endlies. And this krill is a great food for them because it's slow to sink, so the gars will eat off the surface and then the polys, they will too, but it'll also sink down for them to get. Fun fish. Now let's feed the 150. The pellet that dropped, we have a lot of the bottom feeders. We have silver coolies. We have those really awesome gastromyzon viriosis with that bright yellow tail. We have the reticulated hill streamer, Soelia linealata. And a mono shrimp that is absolutely massive. Whoops, sorry. Really brings everybody out when I feed. see up underneath that wood is a female rhinogobius. Notice they're a lot less colorful than the males. Gives you an idea of sort of the diversity that's found in this aquarium. I just love those yellow-tailed gastromyazons. They're so gorgeous. I'm really hoping they're going to breed for me. The cobitis are the Spiny loaches in the front. There's the rhinocobius male. Sorry, this is a bit washed out. The lighting on this tank is pretty powerful. I really do think the Anubius I added here is really helping with the overall appearance of this aquarium. I'm going to do a formal two year birthday video on this aquarium soon. Feeding time is definitely fun in here. Freddy gets really sassy. See how nice some of the white clouds are. And see how the food is so consistently dispersed through the water column because of this current. You know, in the two years this tank has been running, I have cleaned the filter exactly once, and this is still the flow. And not only is the flow like that there, you can see the plants waving consistently across the aquarium from the good circular flow for this hill stream tank. It's 
so I am going to go outside and work on the greenhouse. Uh, I look forward to showing you guys that project. It is fully constructed now on the outside, but I have to build all the shelving and set up the, the inside. Um, I also need to get ready to overwinter a lot of my plants, so i sort of on the fence about whether or not what kind of video series I'm going to do on that for you guys. Let me know below what you'd be interested in seeing. Do you want to see the greenhouse build? Do you just want to see how I set up the inside? Like, what do you guys want to know? Because I don't want to bore you. Um, as always, thank you for your continued support. Make sure you stop by my Instagram where I do a lot of updates every day on what's going on in the fish room and the yard, my Facebook, and my website where you can find my current stock list. As always, let me know below if you have any comments or suggestions. So I came down to the fish room today to this. Now these are three 10 gallon tanks that have been running just like they are for the past seven years. Same light, they all have the same filtration, they're all stocked about the same, etc, etc, etc. And I'm not looking for causes here, I just thought I would show you guys that sometimes these things happen. And what I do for green water is to add Daphnia because they will eat it up. So luckily for me, I had Daphnia coming in today anyway. And all I'm gonna do is drop a bag of the Daphnia right in there. And then we'll see how long it takes for it to eat it all up. Now, there's also Dario Dario in this tank and they'll love the Daphnia too. But I just put 80 tons of Daphnia, so I don't think they're going to uh, eat it all too fast. But since green water is such an excellent, excellent food source for Daphnia, I would imagine to come down here tomorrow and this would be nearly clear. I'll keep you posted.